friends. Today, we're going to start reviewing for the AP Physics C test for mechanics. Um, I'm going to make a series of videos, have them separate, and then put them all together as well into one big video, in case you want to watch that. Uh, so let's begin. We start with just the really, really basic ideas, um, all stuff that you probably would have covered in honors physics or, you know, AP Physics 1, something like that. So distance, Right, the differences between distance, path length, displacement, right? Remember that displacement is a vector. It has the, the arrow above it, right? Uh, distance and path length can be uh, different things, right? Average speed, average means that you're taking that over a period of time. Average velocity, that's the displacement over a period of time. There's a difference in the time there. You're not talking about instantaneous uh, velocity or instantaneous um acceleration or, you know, pay attention to those types of things. It's talking about average or instantaneous. Um, and so if, as long as you have a constant acceleration, as long as you have constant acceleration, you can use what we call the VIFTAD equations, V initial final time uh, acceleration distance. So it's these types of equations, right? All of these, these work and they're valid and you probably have them memorized, you know, the backwards and forwards, you see them in your sleep. Uh, these only work when you have constant acceleration. If you don't have constant acceleration, that's when you need to use your calculus. And so here's a summary of the calculus. Velocity is the derivative of the position function, right? If you have a position function with respect to time, you take the derivative of that, that gives you the velocity function. Same thing for acceleration. Uh, acceleration is the first derivative of the velocity function. It's also the second derivative of the position function. Um, you can take integrals as well. The thing about the integral is that it doesn't tell you what the instantaneous uh, velocity is or the instantaneous position, but you can use the integrals to find the uh, the change in velocity and the change in position. Uh, so keep that in mind. That's just this relationship. And then uh, one of the one of the big ideas in physics is that you want to be able to go back and forth between descriptions and functions and graphs and that kind of thing, right? So back and forth, this is all conceptualized graph-wise in, uh, in this way, right? So here you have a, a position function, right? Here's a position graph. The slope of this, in other words, the derivative of this gives you the velocity function. And the velocity function, right? Uh, if you take the slope of this or take the derivative, you think of it that way from the calculus perspective, that gives you the acceleration function, right? So what's happening here, the, the slope is increasing, so we have an increasing value. Here we have a constant slope, and so we have a constant value on this. And then taking the area under the graph, it's also finding the integral. Uh, that gives you the change in uh, uh, velocity. And then here, the area under this graph gives you the change in the position, which you can find uh, over here. Again, it doesn't give you the instantaneous, right? So if you just find like the, the area here, that's going to give you the change in position from here to here, but it's not going to tell you exactly where you are on the graph. Um, okay, some other, some other things. Again, the first unit is all, uh, so, you know, big picture, the first unit, what are you doing? It's kinematics. All we're doing in unit one is describing motion. Uh, we haven't gotten into any causes, any forces, right? Any causes for the change in motion. It's all just about describing motion. So that's one dimensional. But then we can get two dimensional, even three dimensional. In order to do that, what we do is we pay attention to uh, things that are vectors and scalars, et cetera. So um, keep in mind vectors, right? We represent vectors with with arrows. It's really useful. The arrows help because the length of the arrow shows us the magnitude and the arrow can also show us direction. An example of a vector is uh, velocity. Uh, students always like to imitate, you know, the character from uh, Despicable Me, the vector committing crimes with direction and magnitude. Oh yeah, right. He's right. That's what a vector is. Uh, vectors have direction and magnitude. A scalar has magnitude only. So for example, something like mass, time, those are examples of just scalar quantities. When you multiply a vector and a scalar, uh, you can just multiply the scalar in and it gets distributed to, to all the different parts of the, of the vector quantity. Um, when you do vector addition, right? So that's adding the arrows together. You can do that graphically where you add, you put them tip to tail, right? So you can add two vectors kind of like this 
you know, here's one vector and I'm adding it to this vector. And you can see I've put them tip to tail so the resultant looks like this. Okay, there's the resultant, et cetera. And then you can also do this, um, what you could say, um, you know, analytically by splitting this into components. So you take the vertical component of this one, the horizontal component of this one, the horizontal component of this one, plus the vertical component of this one. So if you put them all into a table, you can add the verticals, add the horizontals, you know, use all your trigonometry, sine, cosine, tangent, split it up, put it all back together, use a Pythagorean theorem, and find analytically what the resultant is. Um, also, when you're splitting things up into components like that, you can use unit vector notation. That's the IJK. Don't forget about that. It's extremely useful, very helpful. Um, you know, I is your horizontal, J is your vertical, K is your, you know, into or out of the page. Don't forget right-hand coordinate systems. Um, uh, this is just a, a handy, handy notation to have. And especially when it comes to things like vector arithmetic. Um, I'll show you another thing about vector arithmetic in a minute. But you pay attention to the vectors, right? And if you have this all in unit vector notation, then... Uh, it works, and you can have everything in unit vector notation. You just add the i's, add the j's, add the, add the k's. Same thing as what you're doing here when you're adding up the components, right? Ijk is just a different way. It's a notation for uh, paying attention to the to those components. Um, dot product, right? So when it comes to taking, uh, so when you have two vectors and you want to combine them in some way. Right, you can add, subtract, etc. It's like how do you multiply vectors? The thing about the product, it says product here, and and there is multiplication involved. But I want you to be careful when you think about dot product. Think of it more as a way of combining two vectors. I don't want you to automatically jump to multiplication, right? Because there's also a cross product, which is another way of combining two vectors. Uh, so a dot product, it's just it's it's one way. Of combining these vectors. It's a certain process that you can go through with these two vectors to get another thing that comes out. The thing that comes out of a dot product is a scalar, and so they call it the scalar product. Again, the way of combining two vectors that gives you a scalar output. Okay, um, It's a process that you put them through. Two ways of calculating the dot product. A dot B is uh, the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times cosine theta and theta is the angle between the two vectors. Also, what you can do is you can find the individual components, right? The horizontal, the vertical, the forward, backward components. Uh, you multiply the two components together, and then you just add everything up. And that feels really weird. Students are always like, wait, I, what? You know, because we're always taught we keep the vertical, horizontal, everything separate. And it's fine. You do that when you multiply, but then you just take those products and you just add them all together. Uh, if you use both of these, by the way, right, if you know, if you can find these components and uh, and you know the resultants, then you can put these two together to find theta sometimes. Another uh, application here is projectile motion. Projectile motion, it's it's really simple and it gets messy because it's two-dimensional. So students are like, oh, what are, what's going on? Right. The whole key is that the horizontal acceleration is zero and the vertical acceleration is G, acceleration due to gravity. And keep in mind that the time is the same. The time is the thing that uh, doesn't matter if it's vertical or horizontal and it goes back and forth. So find the time here, the velocity here, this time vertically, horizontally, whatever it might be. Uh, finding relative velocity, this could be two dimensional, could be three dimensional. Things like, you know, there's a boat on the water or two boats on the water and they're moving relative to the water. How are they moving relative to each other? That kind of idea, right? Or there's a boat in the river, the river is moving. The the vector arithmetic works, okay? But you got to pay attention to the notation here and the negative signs. So, for example, let's say we've got boats A and B and they're moving on the water. And I want to find the velocity of A with respect to B. That's what this means. V, A, B is the velocity of boat A with respect to boat B. So I can find that by finding the velocity of boat A with respect to the water plus the velocity of the water, that would be C, with respect to boat B. So see how these two things combine? 
It's VAC plus VCB. It's like the C is in the middle, and so it combines, and the C cancels out, and you just get VAB. It's got to be arranged that way. This has to be the velocity of A with respect to C and the velocity of C with respect to B. That means if you know the velocity of B with respect to the water, that you have to flip it, okay? Because this V of CB is equal to negative V of BC. It's equal to the negative of the velocity of the boat with respect to the water. Uh, and so if you pay attention to these negative signs, to flipping vectors, and to the notation here and the way that this arithmetic is set up, it works. You should always never just rely 100% on equations, right? This formula, this equation, is an expression of something that we've learned, right? Some idea that we've developed. Always, you know, have a way to be checking these ideas and thinking about it, draw pictures, diagrams. Um, it's really important. Sometimes on an, on an open-ended question, you can get credit just for drawing a diagram. A good diagram, uh, even if it doesn't necessarily ask for it. Uh, and then drawing the diagram should help you anyway. So, I mean, every every question, equation, diagram, graph, think back and forth between those representations and use them to help you uh, know that you're doing the right thing and to be checking your answers as you go to get a full concept of the question. Okay, so not too long, pretty quick. That's our review of Unit 1, kinematic, Kinematics for AP Physics C, and I'll see you for the review of Unit 2.